Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're doing an unboxing of Clash of Sovereigns, the War of Austri Austrian Succession, 1740 to 1748. This is designed by Bob Kalinowski, produced by GMT Games. Um, obviously, so this takes place in the 18th century uh, between France, Prussia, Spain, the Holy Roman Empire, uh, King and uh, Great Britain and Ireland, and Savoy and Sardinia. These are, your, these are your clashing sovereigns right here. So let's crack it open, see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Oh, Don't forget to subscribe oh, and click the bell. One ringy dingy. Oh, so one cool thing I noticed as I was taking the shrink off is it's number 2222 in GMT's catalog. It means nothing, but kind of cool trivia. Uh, this is not a very solo friendly game. In fact, GMT rates it uh, as a three on solitaire suitability and a six in complexity. It plays three to 12 hours, depending on the scenario. It is a card driven game and you can play with two to four players. It is one of you know GMT's standard size thinner boxes, about two inches deep. Right. So the first thing we see here is we have two dice, a red and a blue. The nice GMT, you know, pre-rounded, pre-rounded like counters. Uh, you know, they got rounded corners, so they're gonna roll pretty easily. So who wins? Let's see. Oh, we tied. All right, everybody's happy, or nobody's happy. All right, so we've got what, four decks of cards here. We've got one for Britain. We've got one for France and Spain. We've got one for Prussia. It's a small deck for Prussia. And we've got some, looks like rule reference cards, perhaps. And then a deck for Austria. So we will open those here shortly and see some of the cards. Then the, interestingly, we already have, uh, this is uh, from March, 2023. We have an errata sheet already included uh, for some markers, some cards, the playbook and the played events checklist. So you might wanna mark up your rule book to uh, add those corrections. Then we do have our rules of playbook. There we go. And this is they're still, I guess in 2022, they had a glut of this shiny, glossy paper. The shiny, glossy paper, because it's not printed on their great matte finished card stock. It's more on this magazine stock, which you see picks up the light. But it is a small rule book. It's 28 pages. It is, I'm sure, full color, well produced, as they always are. Just a little shiny. Um, I'm so used to there being a lot here to hold the hold the rule book when we get to it. So we have the pragmatics of the bourbons and others and the colors of their areas on the map, which we'll see shortly. Go straight into the to the details of the uh, counters, the cards. So we have strategy cards, which is what we saw with the decks for each faction or belligerent, as you want to call them. We'll look at those cards in detail here in a, in a minute. I'm curious what those other cards are for. In fact, let's just look. Can you tell me what the components are? There are Day of Battle cards. Ten Day of Battle cards. So we'll look at those here in a minute. So it gives us, covers the sequence of play. As with, as with most GMT games, you're going to have no problem following it and picking up the rules. So. Um, pictures where you need them, charts are built in here as well. I'm sure they'll be on a reference uh, card as well. Supply is a factor. This kind of reminds me of, of games they have like Washington's War uh, and others where it's, uh, you know, it's got the point to point kind of section uh, or point-to-point -point locations on the map that uh, you know have various properties and you try to control those but that could be I'm sure that's you know the only the only uh, 
similarity. It does look like the rules go all the way through here to the end. Yeah, and you get to page 26 out of 28 for optional rules. So it's pretty much, pretty much gonna be, you're gonna read this rule book. Does it have an index on the back? Help you find rules. Then we have the playbook, which has our scenarios. Looks like there's four, no, five, six. There's six scenarios in here. This is a smaller book, about 16 pages. And then there's a played events checklist. Um, Kind of interesting, they actually have check boxes next to them, like you'd actually check off when the events are played, maybe. Oh, uh, they grant permission to photocopy the page for personal use and the whole booklet. So you can make copies of this as you need to, and then you can check off the ones as they played. So there are three, uh, six scenarios. There's three standalone scenarios, uh, a campaign scenario, a short campaign scenario, and another short campaign scenario. Uh, so three standalone and three campaigns. And then the scenarios obviously tell you where to set up. Let's look at the map. And then the victory conditions for each one. And any special rules for the scenario. Pretty straightforward there. Well laid out, I like the historic artwork. It's included. They do a lot of research into their subject matter and design accordingly. And then there's some discussion of the cards. We have some designer's notes here as well, explaining the design methodology. So that's the 16 page playbook. Then we have the faction mats here. Looks like we have an Austrian mat. A French Bavarian mat. Spanish mat and the British mat. As reinforcements, as those for reinforcements, depots available. They don't all have the same thing, but they're all laid out the same. So like depots are at the bottom right corner. Uh, oh, there's the Piedmont and the Prussians as well. So I guess this is one player would control both of these factions. The British and the Piedmont are controlled. The French Bavarians work together and the Austrians are their own thing. So as our army reading, that and we've got a double this is a double width a little longer so it's about a legal size piece of card stock same as the mats they're all in the GMT glossy card stock so this is the expanded sequence of play track to allow you to trace how you're playing the game so we've got the uh, spring and men reinforcement phase, summer campaign season, fall campaign season, early winter and late winter, and the different things that you do. And it, then it guides you through replete, you know, in player order do this, repeat for all players this. So I can imagine that's very helpful. It's probably a tracking marker that will go on there. And then we have our player reference cards here. Let's see what we got. We've got two uh, CRTs. Two copies of that, it's double-sided. They have the CRT, the naval charts, the siege charts, army battle ratings for the various countries, and then the fortunes of war table, the action point allowances, activation point allowances, and the activation point costs. So what you get, and how, you, how you spend them. So there's two of those. So they are play four player, you have to share. And then we've got the Clash of Sovereigns, War of Australia, Austrian Succession, 45 track, the Regaining the Crown track. This is single-sided, obviously, because this is going to set off board and be used throughout the game. So as different things happen, you get French support, contested crossing, march on Edinburgh, all forces available. And then Regaining the Crown. And then we have the, the turn track, also single-sided. Got your victory point track, event track, monarchial will track, diplomacy track, and when leaders arrive. Then we have, well, this is interesting. Oh, no, no. Okay. All right. So this is not designed for solo, meaning you can't play against um, an AI bot. However, it does provide for the uh, 
the uh, card driven game solo system that GMT produces, it does provide you with um, instructions to play Clash of, Clash of Sovereigns using that system if you already own it. So that was designed by Stuka Joe, uh, very popular for card driven games. Um, you use it for all, all, all sides, so you would you know, this, there would be there, there's a there's a methodology for determining what cards you have available and how much they cost you to use versus uh, just you know just using whatever cards are in your hand kind of thing. So uh, that's kind of cool that they went ahead and included this, and this is just the instructions for using that system, which is sold separately with this game. So that's nice that they did include that. So you could play this uh, solo. You're still true soloing it, playing all sides. But this kind of limits what you can do um, in a way to, uh, to make it easier for you to not know. In choosing between limited options, you will then have to make the best decision that you can without worrying what the other person is going to do, what the other side is going to do, because they don't, you don't know what options they're going to have. So you really don't know how their cards are going to get played out. So that's pretty, pretty cool. And then we have our game map. We'll unfold and take a look at it as a paper map. It's well, card, you know, very thick paper, very good quality paper, but it still is a paper map, not a mounted map. And we'll look at that in a second. And then we have our counter sheets. Looks like we have three sheets of counters. They are the square, square cut counters. You'll have to kind of cut them out of the sprue and then and then uh, round them with the Oregon Laminations 2.5 millimeter deluxe corner rounder, the only tool for the job. So we have. Uh, the units for the various factions. We have Prussia here, France, our leaders, fleets, markers, events. Uh, yeah, see, I guess one of the errata here on the Hawk counter, you can see is they overprinted a three on top of the DRM. So that's, I think, addressed one of the things I saw addressed in the errata. This copy is very well centered. Very good. And then we have our British, Austrian counters. Piedmont counters. The Russian. Dutch, Spain. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Some counters. Tracking markers. Pragmatic bonus activations. Where we want to go first? We'll look at the map. So it's a 22 by 34 inch map. It is vertical. So it's eight panels, so to speak. So this has your turn record track 1740 through 1748. It's got your interception and withdrawal charts up here at the top. Uh, army, storage boxes, fleet boxes. And like I said, it's a point to point. Kind of game the the colors are very nice and bright and the background of the grid here so to speak is is very beautiful I like the the gradation on the on the borders to make them stand out yeah, let's keep going there are holding boxes we got India as an off board you know, as an inset Italy clash of sovereigns the Balearic Sea, and Bob Kalinowski dedicates this to 70s gamers, gamers who were gaming in the 70s. Day of Battle cards, very nice graphics on them there. These are the conditions that will be happening during the battle, so land battles are 10 to 89 strength points, maneuver, add one subordinate leader, DRM for each side, large battles, no effects, sips at sea. So it gives you, the, these are the conditions for the day as you're playing through the game. So that's kind of cool. There's 10 of those. This is about Austrian succession. So we'll take a look at the Austrian deck just as a representative of the, all the factions. All right, it's very nice back here. Beautiful, again, beautiful artwork. Very, very, very good graphic design. I like the way this one's laid out. They got the seal on there with GMT games in there. So then these are your cards and your strength points and etc. 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 So 
Surprise offensive, maybe play the late winter season only. Three CPs for Austrian bonus activations. And then one time event, Insurrection, Maria's Entreaty, play spring 1741 or later. Breathing space, the Treaty of Klein Schellendorf, summer 41 or later. Negotiations, roll a die on a one to three, move Piedmont's influence marker one space toward the pragmatics. Etc. 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 So it's cool. Each each side has, they're not sharing a deck, so each faction has their own deck to use. But again, it's cool that you can use that uh, Stuka Joe GMT CDG solo system to kind of fairly true solo the game, playing all sides. So let's see. They get 37 cards. It's, it's nice that they wrap them all separately as well, so you can take the Austrian deck. You don't have to sift through a big stack you know one big deck and pull all the cards out so if you pick up a copy of clash of sovereigns the war of the austrian succession 1740 to 48 you are going to get let's go through this in order here you're going to go through you're going to get the the 22 by 34 inch uh paper map three sheets of five eighths inch counters to get the CDG solo system reference guide. Very nice bonus in there. You're gonna get the VP event track, monarchial will track, sideboard, the 45 track, and then we're getting the crown track sideboard. You're gonna get two copies of the player aid with your CRT and other charts. You're gonna get the extended sequence of play track. Sided, but folds out. You are going to get the army mats for the French Bavarian, British, Spanish, Austrians. You're going to get the 16 page playbook with the six scenarios laid out, the 28 page rule book, an errata sheet. You're going to get those 10 day battle cards, the 37 deck Austrian cards and then decks for France and Spain which is a little bit thicker uh, Prussia and Britain and the Piedmont along with two tie-breaking dice yeah red one three to two and that is everything that comes in Clash of Sovereigns the War of Austrian Succession 1740 to 1748 designed by Bob Kalinowski and dedicated to all gamers from the 70s. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!